and they've got quite a few nice coffee shops. There's a lot of cute little neighborhoods to explore during the day. Um, but, you know, I'm one of these guys who just likes to spend their time researching players, getting ready for the game during the day, uh, just catching little conversations here and there with members of our coaching staff or players on the team just to find a few little nuggets here and there to inform the audience. Yeah, well, Richmond is such a great historic city, and you're right, it is absolutely gorgeous there. I've been there, uh, and it, it's a wonderful place to be. And uh, this is a wonderful time of the year, the beginning of a baseball season. We've got a weekend, John, and uh, these uh, – uh, young studs here for the Altoona Curve, taking a few lumps in this past week and learning what double-A ball is all about, huh? For sure. I mean, you know, this Richmond team, they've got some veteran guys who have been in this league before and, um, you know, a little bit older players that, you know, sort of know what it's like to play at this level. And, you know, I've been impressed with Nick Gonzalez. You know, he's, he's leading the league in walks, picked up a couple more last night. Um, you know, we were all excited about Gonzalez and his ability to hit, and that is definitely true. Having watched some of his batting practice, he can uh, he can spray the ball all over the field. But I've been impressed with his plate discipline. Um, and, you know, it's just a matter of getting good pitching and good hitting on the same night to come away with a couple wins. Yeah, the interesting thing about Nick Gonzalez is when he was drafted, they said he was the best college bat and maybe the best bat in that entire draft. And, and that's played out. Uh, as as he's learned the pitchers as well. Uh, and that's one of the things you talk about moving up to double-A ball. You're playing against guys uh, who have a few years under their belts, and they they know the tricks by now, don't they? They sure do. And, you know, Nick was uh, was a guest on MLB Network Radio on Sunday morning, and, you know, during his conversation there, he was saying, you know, the, the goal for me every day is just to hit two balls hard every day. And, you know, that's something that really stuck with me. You know, that's, that's a good goal to have on a daily basis because, you know, as as you know, when you hit the ball hard, good things happen uh, in the field. You know, you give yourself a chance to get on base. Yeah, absolutely. So Nick is one of those guys that in a couple of years we're going to be seeing uh, playing in Pittsburgh at second base. Um, and uh, and it's interesting to me to look at the shortstop position. Paguero is is a great, great prospect. Uh, but Mr. Alvarez has been making a few statements as well, hasn't he? Yeah, that was uh, that caught us a little bit by surprise. You know, uh, Andres hit six home runs in I think just about 40 games in Greensboro last year. So there is a little bit of pop in there. And, you know, last night, uh, that was, uh, that was a big swing, you know, helping the curve extend the lead there after Richmond had drawn within a run, um, his second home run already. And, you know, it's, it's little guys like that over the course of the season that, uh, that can emerge and, you know, make the difference for a team in terms of wins and losses. You need those guys that can contribute, even if they're only playing maybe two days a week. Uh, you know, we had folks like that last year with Daniel Amaral and Josh Bissonnette who would come around and, you know, when their name was called, they would make an impact. And maybe it's Alvarez who's one of those guys this year. Yeah, absolutely. You've okay, you've you've gotten a look at these. I know that uh, when you were hearing these names from Greensboro last year and then you realized over the winter that uh, a lot of those guys would be playing in Altoona, that there were guys that you just couldn't wait to get a look at. Um, and, and you mentioned batting practice. You can see a lot and learn a lot in batting practice. Um, what are they like? Who are the guys that have really stood out for you in this first week? You know, Connor Scott has, has blown me away, and he's a guy that's new to the organization, came over as one of the three players in the Jacob Stallings trade made last November uh, before the lockout happened with the Marlins. And, you know, Scott was a first-round pick for the Marlins, 13th overall, mm -hmm. um, and he's just tearing the cover off the ball to start the year here. You know, Altuna's sort of got an embarrassment of riches in the outfield where you've got four guys that, you know, really should play on a daily basis between Lolo Sanchez, Matt Frazier, Jackson Winsky, and Connor Scott. And, you know, it's, it's a tough task for manager Kyron Madison early in the season here to balance that and make sure each guy, uh, you know, gets the right number of at-bats every week. And, Connor's just been terrific at hitting the ball hard, doing it to all fields. And, you know, he's got a good demeanor about him. Still young for the level at only 22 years of age. And I'm excited to see more of him. Yeah, well, maybe maybe minor league baseball needs to go to 12-inning games and two DHs just to get everybody there at bats. <laughs> well, I think nine innings is the right number for me, the broadcaster. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that would be killer, wouldn't it, every night? 12 would, be, 12 would be a long night because then you're looking at, <laughs> oh, maybe an average game time of closer to four hours than three. <laughs> yeah. All right, you've gotten a couple of looks at Carmen Majinski, um, and uh, and uh, you're getting the second time around in the rotation for a bunch of these fellas. Uh, uh, Carmen's outing last night, um, you know, a bit of a struggle again for him, and it, that's just a function of stepping up in, in, in classification, isn't it? It sure is. And, you know, I think Carmen was certainly better than the first 
start for, of the year for him. I think the weather plays a big difference. You know, it was roughly 43 degrees at the time of first pitch on opening day on Friday. And, you know, last night here in Richmond, it was right around 75 and overcast, which is closer to a more optimal baseball condition to play in. And you could see that Carmen had good feel for both of his fastballs, the, the good slider. Um, you know, he's a guy who's, you know, not going to, he's not going to break you with a big fastball. You know, he's not going to run it up there into the high 90s. So, uh, he's got to work below the belt and, and, you know, work the corners of the strike zone a little bit more finely than other pitchers. But, you know, last night was an encouraging step for him, and I'm looking forward to seeing another one from him. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this fellow pitching tonight, Mike Burrows, uh, he was one of those overslot guys, the, the fabled round 11 uh, that happens in the Major League Draft. Uh, and teams, for some reason, they figured out to work their way around the system. Uh, the 11th round, you can get some really good talent uh, and and maybe pay a little over slot, maybe even get him under slot. Uh, but uh, Mike Burrows tonight, what do we know about him? What did he look like first time? Oh, really, really good curveball. Exciting profile in that regard. Um, you know, I crossed paths with a scout for an American League team during our first series of the year, and he was excited to see Burrows again. You know, he said, I've, I've got a major league grade on this guy. I think he's going to pitch in the big leagues for a while. Um, maybe not as a starter, more likely as a reliever, but he said, I really like the profile. Mike's a just a hyper, hyper competitor out there on the mound. Um, and he's got that good fastball velocity in the mid to high 90s with it. I, I expect tonight we'll, we'll we'll see sort of the best of Mike because the weather's going to be good again here in Richmond, probably in the high 70s and sunny. Um, Burroughs is, uh, is an exciting guy. I'm looking forward to seeing more of him, too. We've got some real talent in that starting rotation. Yeah. Uh, is he one of those uh, guys? The, the, there's a, a, a certain profile that works out in Major League Baseball drafts lately, and that is – uh, every pitcher seems to be about seven feet, 13 inches tall and, and weigh 260 pounds and, and throw it a thousand miles an hour. Is he in that or is he uh, a smaller guy? Mike's a little bit closer to an average size for a baseball player, about six foot two, but, you know, sort of a well-built 215 pounds, not, you know, sort of the real tall, long type that you might have in mind. Um, but Mike th- certainly does have the tools to be a successful major leaguer. I, I was reading about him and the way the Pirates are approaching um, the prospects and, and giving themselves a say in, in how it is that they're going to develop as minor leaguers. He's a guy that's really embraced this new system, hasn't he? For sure. And, you know, Mike had felt like he had a little bit to prove. He was talking about this on our media day call prior to the season. Um that he felt like he had something to prove last year, that, you know, with a new regime taking over, running the player development system in 2020 and 21, you know, he felt like, because he was drafted by the previous regime in 2019, that, you know, he had something to prove to these guys. And, you know, he really took that attitude to the mound. So, you know, that that attitude, and, you know, Mike was always a guy that was a little more analytically video-minded. Um, you know, he spent the time during the pandemic learning more, about extension and, and, you know, little things about the biometrics that you can learn as a pitcher. Um, and he's taken some of those lessons to heart. And now it's, it's all seamless together because the Pirates are starting to embrace more of that technology at, when it comes to developing pitchers. And it's just a match made in heaven right now. So I think that sets Mike up for some good success here. Absolutely. All right. So the curve going to finish out this weekend against Richmond. Uh, and then what's next? We are back home for six, starting on Tuesday night against New Hampshire. First time we'll see the Blue Jays uh, AA affiliate since uh, 2019. And, you know, on Thursday of this coming week, we're going to debut our Altoona Mountain City jerseys. Um, you know, we're going to pay tribute to the professional baseball franchise that played in Altoona back in 1884. We've got these really cool sort of midnight green, uh, dark sort of vibrant jerseys that we're going to wear for every Thursday night game at PNG field throughout the year will be the Altoona Mountain Cities. Um, you know, th- those are going to be pretty cool. And then, you know, once the season wears on in late September, uh, fans will actually have a chance to bid on the jersey for their favorite player and uh, take it home. We'll have a kids' club game on Sunday, the 24th, and teacher appreciation night on Saturday, a special four o'clock first pitch as we uh, hang on to a little bit of sunshine here in April. There you go. Tickets available now. AltoonaCurve.com. There you go. John, thanks for being with us this morning. Have a great weekend in Richmond. Thank you. Talk to you soon. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160 and AM 11.